everyone and welcome back to story time. We're going to read a little bit more of Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We're up to chapter six. The first two finders. The very next day the first golden ticket was found. The finder was a boy called Augustus Gloop and Mr Bucket's evening newspaper carried a large picture of him on the front page. The picture showed a nine-year-old boy who was so enormously fat, he looked as though he had been blown up by a powerful pump. Great flabby folds of fat bulged out of every part of his body, and his face was like a monstrous ball of dough with two small, greedy, current eyes peering out upon the world. The town in which Augustus Gloop lived the newspaper said had gone wild with excitement over their hero. Flags were flying from all the windows. Children had been given a holiday from school and a parade was being organised in honour of the famous youth. I just knew Augustus would find a golden ticket, his mother told the newspaper man. He eats so many bars of chocolate a day that it was almost impossible for him not to find one. Eating is his hobby, you know. That's all he's interested in. But still, that's better than being a hooligan and shooting off zip guns and things like that in his spare time, isn't it? And what I always say is, he wouldn't go on eating like he does unless he needed nourishment, would he? It's all vitamins anyway. What a thrill it will be to visit Mr Wonka's marvellous factory. We're just as proud as anything. What a Vaulting woman, said Grandma Josephine. Now here is a picture for you. There's Augustus Gloop and his lovely mum. What a repulsive boy, said Grandma Georgina. Only four tickets left, said Grandpa George. I wonder who'll get those. And now the whole country, indeed the whole world, seems suddenly to be caught up in a mad chocolate buying spree. Everybody searching frantically for those precious remaining tickets. Fully grown women were seen going into sweet shops and buying ten Wonka bars at a time. Then tearing off the wrappers on the spot and peering gingerly underneath for a glint of golden paper. Children were taking hammers and smashing their piggy banks and running out to the shops with handfuls of money. In one city, a famous gangster robbed a bank of a thousand pounds and spent the whole lot on Wonka bars that same afternoon. And when the police entered his house to arrest him, they found him sitting on the floor amidst mountains of chocolate, ripping off the wrappers with the blade of a long dagger. In far off Russia, a woman called Charlotte Roos claimed to have found a second ticket, but it turned out to be a clever fake. The famous English scientist Professor Foulbody invented a machine which would tell at once without opening the wrapper of a bar of chocolate whether or not there was a golden ticket hidden underneath it. The machine had a mechanical arm that shot out with tremendous force and grabbed hold of anything that had the slightest bit of gold inside. And for a moment it looked like the answer to everything. But unfortunately, while the professor was showing off the machine to the public at the sweet counter of a large department store, the mechanical arm shot out and made a grab for a gold filling in the back tooth of a duchess who was standing nearby. There was an ugly scene and the machine was smashed by the crowd. Suddenly, on the day before Charlie Bucket's birthday, the newspapers announced that a second golden ticket had been found. The lucky person was a small girl called Veruca Salt, who lived with her rich parents in a great city far away. Once again, Mr Bucket's evening newspaper carried a big picture of the finder. There she is. Veruca Salt. She was sitting between her beaming father and mother in the living room of their house, waving her golden ticket above her head, grinning from ear to ear. Baruka's father, Mr Salt, had eagerly explained to the newspaper man exactly how the ticket was found. You see, boys, he said, as soon as my little girl said that she simply had to have one of those golden tickets, I went out into the town and buying up all the Wonka bars I could lay my hands on, thousands. 
thousands of them I must have bought. Hundreds of thousands. Then I had them loaded onto trucks and sent directly to my own factory. I'm in the peanut business, you see, and I've got about a hundred women working for me all over my place, shelling peanuts, roasting and sorting. That's what they do all along, those women. They sit there shelling peanuts. So I said to them, OK, girls, from now on, you can stop shelling peanuts and start shelling the wrappers off these chocolate bars instead. And they did. Every worker in the place yanking the paper off those bars of chocolate at full speed ahead from morning till night. But three days went by and we had no luck. Oh, it was terrible. My little Veruca got more and more upset each day. And every time I went home, she would scream at me, Where's my golden ticket? I want my golden ticket! And she would lie for hours on the floor, kicking and yelling in the most disturbing way. Well, I just hated to see my little girl feeling unhappy like that. So I vowed I would keep up the search until I got her what she wanted. And then suddenly, on the evening of the fourth day, one of my women workers yelled, I got it, her golden ticket. And I said, give it to me quick. And she did. And I rushed it home and gave it to my darling Veruca. And now she's all smiles and we have a happy home once again. That's even worse than the fat boy, said Grandma Josephine. She really needs a good spanking, said Grandma Georgina. I don't think the girl's father played quite fair, Grandpa, do you? Charlie murmured. He spoils her, Grandpa Joe said, and no good can ever come from spoiling a child like that, Charlie. You mark my words. Come to bed, darling, said Charlie's mother. Tomorrow's your birthday, and don't forget that I expect you'll be up early to open your presents. A Wonka chocolate bar, cried Charlie. It is a Wonka bar, isn't it? Yes, my love, said his mother. Of course it is. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if I found the third golden ticket inside, said Charlie. Bring it in here when you get it, Grandpa Joe said. Then we can all watch you taking off the wrapper. Chapter 7 Charlie's birthday. Happy birthday, cried the four old grandparents as Charlie came into their room early the next morning. Charlie smiled nervously and sat down on the edge of the bed. He was holding his present, his only present, very carefully in his two hands. Wonka's Whipple Scrumptious Fudge Mallow Delight, it said on the wrapper. The four old people, two at either end of the bed, propped themselves up on their pillows and stared with anxious eyes at the bar of chocolate in Charlie's hands. Mr and Mrs Bucket came in and stood at the foot of the bed watching Charlie. The room became silent. Everybody was waiting for Charlie to start opening his present. Charlie looked down at the chocolate bar. He ran his fingers slowly back and forth along the length of it, stroking it lovingly with the shiny paper wrapper, made, making little sharp crackling noise in the quiet room. Then Mr. Bucket said gently, You mustn't be too disappointed, my darling, if you don't find what you're looking for underneath that wrapper. You really can't expect to be as lucky as all that. She's quite right, Mr. Bucket said. Charlie didn't say anything. After all, Grandma Josephine said, In the whole wide world, there are only three tickets left to be found. The thing to remember, Grandma Georgina said, is whatever happens, you'll still have the bar of chocolate. Wonka's Whipple Scrumptious Fudge Mallow Delight, cried Grandpa George. It's the best of them all. You'll just love it. Yes, Charlie whispered. I know. Just forget all about those golden tickets and enjoy the chocolate, Grandpa Joe said. Why don't you do that? They all knew it was ridiculous to expect this one poor little bar of chocolate to have a magic ticket inside it. They were trying as gently and as kindly as they could to prepare Charlie for the disappointment. But there was one other thing that the grown-ups also knew, and that was this. That however small the chance might be of striking Lucky, the chance was there. The chance had to be there. This particular bar of chocolate had as much chance as any other of having a golden ticket. And that's why all the grandparents and parents in the room were actually just as tense and excited as Charlie was, although they were pretending to be very calm. 
You'd better go ahead and open it up or you'll be late for school, Grandpa Joe said. You might as well get it over with, Grandpa George said. Open it, my dear, Grandma Georgina said. Please open it, you're making me jumpy. Very slowly, Charlie's fingers began to tear open one small corner of the wrapping paper. The old people in the bed leaned forward, craning their scraggy necks. Then suddenly, as though he could bear it no longer, Charlie tore the paper right down the middle and on his lap there fell a light brown, creamy coloured bar of chocolate. There was no sign of that golden ticket anywhere. Well, that's that, said Grandpa Joe brightly. It's just what we expected. Charlie looked up. Four kind old faces were watching him intently from the bed. He smiled at them, a small sad smile. Then he shrugged his shoulders and picked up the bar of chocolate, held it out to his mother and said, Here, mother, have a bit. We'll share it. I want everybody to taste it. Certainly not, said his mother. And the others all cried, No, no, we wouldn't dream of it. It's all yours. Please, begged Charlie, turning round and offering it to Grandpa Joe. But neither he nor anyone else would take even a tiny bit. It's time to go to school, darling, Mrs Bucket said putting an arm around Charlie's skinny shoulders. Come on, or you'll be late.